Shabbat to everybody. It's wonderful to be downtown again, especially since uh, we ordered better weather than last year. Hanukkah commemorates a miracle that happened 2,200 years ago in Israel at the temple that stood at the top of the mountain in Jerusalem. We know the story. The oil could only last for one day, and it lasted for eight. And so a holiday commemorating the eight-day miracle became the standard that we know as Hanukkah. But if we think about it, the menorah inside the temple was a seven-branched menorah, not eight branches. And secondly, it stood inside the chamber of the temple, not outside, not in front of it, not just in a field. It stood partially hidden inside of the chamber. So on one hand, we commemorate a miracle that happened with that menorah, but the menorah that we light is significantly different. And I want to emphasize that difference. The seven branches of the menorah represented the normal cycle of the week, seven days of the week. And each one, each branch, represented another day of the week, altogether the seven days. Hanukkah brought about a whole new paradigm, the paradigm of eight. Eight represents transcendence, that which is beyond the seven. It's not just confined to the normal cycle of events. It's an event that stands outside of what we recognize as nature. That miraculous event is symbolized by the eight. And here is the critical difference. When one approaches the world only with the natural order of things, we have to remain within our own context. It's a menorah that stands inside of the temple, protected by the temple, but closed off inside of it. When we are exposed to a higher miraculous power, then we are able to take the menorah outside. We can take the menorah to the downtown, the busy corner of downtown, and create a light which will penetrate the city all across and all around. That's the power of eight. Tonight is the eighth day, and although usually we make the event on the first night, because it was Thanksgiving, we pushed it to the eighth night. But here again, we have that same notion. If we are tonight lighting the eight lights, we are tonight in a state of transcendence. We stand beyond, above and beyond the normal confines of our nature. And we light the eight and bring about a light which is also a transcendent light. May it be the will of God that as we light the eight candles of the menorah tonight, we should be inspired and been imbued with an energy and a power of transcendence so that we show and glow with a light of love, with a light of holiness, with the light of our tradition, and ultimately with a great light that will come to light up the entire world, the light of Mashiach with the Messiah, may he come speedily in our time. Don't forget, the menorah which we light here is a public lighting of the menorah. It does not substitute for the individual obligation to light your own menorah. There are menorah kits available in the tents. If you need a menorah at home, take one and light it at home. Thank you, Rabbi Kaplan. I am humbled to call upon the mayor of Baltimore, the Charm City. Although she's been mayor of the city since 2010, this year she was appointed also to be secretary of the Democratic National Committee. And we only wish her luck and her continued success. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. 
want to wish everyone a very happy Hanukkah. I'm so pleased to join you for this fourth annual menorah lighting here at Baltimore's Inner Harbor. I'm so pleased to be here with uh, all of the elected officials who have uh, been announced. I'm, I'm so proud. It's a, this is a very good showing in, of our community on this halfway decent. And Ricky is claiming a good weather night, but it, that's because she has on a better coat than I do. It, it is. Um, it's a good night. We've we've been we've been here during work, so I'm I'm very pleased to be here. What a beautiful beautiful menorah we have here in Baltimore, the Esther Esther Ann Baltimore Menorah in blessed memory of David Brown's daughter. I'd like to give a uh, special thank you to uh, Shabbat and the Associated for your continued support of this lighting. It seems to get bigger and bigger every single year, which reminds me. Uh, that we have some really great people working for our city, from ensuring that people have a problem-free parade to this amazing setup uh, we are witnessing here this evening. I want to thank uh, Officer Ken uh, Dickstein for directing the parade through Park Heights community, safely to the Inner Harbor, uh, and everyone, uh, all of our officers who participated uh, along the way. This menorah is a shining reminder of the miracle of Hanukkah right here in Baltimore's Inner Harbor. The menorah is a welcome addition to the Inner Harbor's current holiday displays and a testament to Baltimore's strength from Baltimore's diversity. It just goes to prove once again that Baltimore shines brightly when it comes to embracing the different faith traditions that surround us. I wish you all a wonderful, happy, healthy holiday season, a prosperous new year, and Lashana Ba Lashana Haba Baltimore Inner Harbor. Shalom. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to call upon next Mr. Howard Svee Friedman, Chairman of the Associated Jewish Communities Federation of Baltimore, and a longtime champion and friend of the Baltimore Hanukkah Festival as well as other Chabad Lubavitch activities, both in Maryland and abroad. Mr. Friedman. Well, my Kaplan, Madam Mayor, and all the wonderful elected officials and rabbis who are uh, announced today. On behalf of the Associated Jewish Community Federation of Baltimore, I bring you greetings on behalf of this great Baltimore Jewish community in this great city of Baltimore. You know, the Jewish community is accustomed to facing and facing down challenges. Otherwise, we, have, we would have stopped co-founding our critics centuries ago and disappeared from the front pages of history. During the Holocaust, the Grand Rabbi of Blusher, Rabbi Yisrael Sapiro Zatzal, who my family is, is, has been close with for seven generations, was in, a, was in one of the concentration camps. And he was asked by his fellow slave laborers during the war to conduct a public Hanukkah lighting ceremony in that slave labor camp. Light a menorah? If it was discovered, it would have meant instant death for him and the people who did it with him. But if the people were determined, he decided to extend to their request. These starving, pain-wrecked Jews fashioned a makeshift menorah, not a beautiful one like this, but a small makeshift menorah, and hundreds of them gathered to hear the rabbi recite the blessing and light the flame. Afterwards, Zamachowski, a Jewish communist, an atheist, berated the rab Rabbi Spira and says, we wish we were dead, and you have the gall to recite a blessing thanking God for keeping us alive. How could you be such a hypocrite? The rabbi answered, I too have thought about that, but Zamachowski, if hundreds of sick hungry, bereaved Jews are ready to risk their lives for the sake of Judaism, which has lasted for thousands of years. Isn't that a reason to be proud and grateful? Today we are blessed by living in a great country of America, by living in a great city of Baltimore, where we could come in this main McKeldin Square, the main part of the city, and we could light a menorah proudly and happily. with the mayor and city council president, and state's attorney and city councilwoman, and all the elected officials here with us. How lucky we are. On behalf of the associated agencies and the entire Jewish community, I thank Chabad 
for pushing this and making this happen. And thank you all for being here today. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you, Svi, for that moving story. I'd like to call, call upon Council President Bernard Jack Young, President of the Baltimore City Council, to bring us greetings, Hanukkah greetings, from the Baltimore City Council. Good evening and shalom. I first want to thank Rabbi Kaplan, uh, Lipsman, Druck, and Tenenbaum, and all the others Kabob rabbis for organizing this event and for inviting me here tonight to participate in this wonderful tradition. I would like to acknowledge Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake, Councilwoman Ricky Spector, State's Attorney Greg Bernstein, and our other honored guests here tonight. I understand the car parade was very impressive and you got a chance to see an accident on the other side. And coming down 83 uh, this evening, coming down here to the Inner Harbor, was a great way to light up this Inner Harbor. So I want to uh, uh, thank you all for having me here tonight, and I hope that everyone enjoyed the fact that Hanukkah and Thanksgiving fell on the same day because that feat will never happen again in our lifetime. I heard you renamed it Thanksgiver Cup. Is that right? <laughs> I'm honored to join you in celebrating the eighth and final night of Hanukkah. We're here tonight to celebrate the annual ceremony marking the victory of religious freedom and the miracle of God. Hanukkah should remind us that God is capable of meeting each of our needs. As we prepare to light the menorah, let us remember that God wants to draw us closer. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this sacred ceremony, and I wish everyone and the entire Jewish community Hag Shemayah. Is that right? Hag Shemayah. Thank you, Mr. Young. And now moving on with the menorah lighting, I'd like to call upon Rabbi Lisbon from Chabad of Park Heights to light the flame. As well as Jack Young will be lighting the Shabbish. And we are, we are fortunate enough to have with us Mr. Yisrael Gruzin, who will be lighting the menorah. Mr. Gruzin, as a teenager, is himself a Holocaust survivor. And as a teenager, he spent four years in Dachau. It was one of the first concentration camps to open in Germany. He survived and is with us here tonight. And although he's in his 80s, he's dedicated his life to building arcs, podiums, and other synagogue accessories, some of which are found in Beth Tefillah and other synagogues around Baltimore, and therefore showing that I'm Yisrael Chai.